Continue our discussion of that landmark Supreme Court decision striking down bans on same sex marriages, including the one here in Michigan. 13 states had mm. bans in place, and those are no more. It seems we've been waiting for the court to take action on this issue, and now, with one day left of session, the day has finally come. Joining us now to go inside the decision seven, legal analyst Tom Cranmer. A five to four decision, Tom. Does this put this all down to rest, or is it still just too close for people, the American people, to believe that it's been settled? Well, I think it certainly puts it to rest from a legal standpoint. While it was a close decision, uh, certainly uh, it was a case that's now been decided uh, even by a very divided court. All right, so can states do anything? So a close decision, but in those, let's say, 13 states, is there anything that can be done when the Supreme Court rules like this for those who are opposed? Well, I think what can be done is to, to follow the law, is uh, now decided by the Michigan Supreme Court. I think there was a statement earlier from uh, Governor Snyder who indicated that they intend to do just that here in Michigan. Indeed. Okay, we'll break down the decision here and let you uh, discuss some of this. So first of all, we saw one opinion from the majority, authored by Justice Kennedy, who closed with a powerful message writing, no union is more profound than marriage, for it embodies the highest ideals of love, fidelity, devotion, sacrifice, and family. In forming a marital union, two people become something greater than once they were. And he goes on to say, their hope is not to be condemned to live in loneliness, excluded from one civilization's oldest institutions. They ask for equal dignity in the eyes of the law. The Constitution grants them that right. Is the key part of that when he says equal dignity in the eyes of the law? What do I, you think? I think it is. And also, he talked about equal protection and due process, all of the concepts that he and the other four justices thought were important. But interestingly enough, the dissent was a very powerful dissent and a very strident one in some respects. Justice Scalia indicated that he thought that this was a very, very bad day for democracy. He thought that the Constitution has been revised now by an unelected committee of nine. And he was referring, of course, to uh, the other members of the United States Supreme Court. Um, Justice Roberts, in his dissent, said that there may be cause for celebration, but there's really no right found in the Constitution. And what's happened here is that uh, we've legislated from the bench, which is not appropriate. Yeah, he said, in fact, the line was celebrate the availability of new benefits. People who were very excited about this, but do not celebrate the Constitution. It had nothing to do with it. Those two opinions on in the dissent. Let's talk a little bit about what we talked to Dana Nessel about. So for those in opposition, some religious leaders or whatnot, Tom, is there anything in this where they would now look at this and say, are they going to be forced to, to perform ceremonies, or do they have the ability to say, this is not what we believe in and we're not going to do this? No, in in fact, I think Justice Kennedy was very clear, as he should be, in stating that with regard to religious organizations, um, they are still free, as they should be, of course, to follow their own religious tenets and decide what is and isn't appropriate when it comes to marriage. But with regard to the states, uh, that's a different question, and the states now do have to recognize uh, gay marriages. Well, let's talk about the states. A Michigan law has been introduced, actually three different laws that all kind of work together that would not let the government force, as we go back to the religious leaders, to perform same-sex marriages. Now, this is the state dictating what the religious uh, parties can do. How does that uh, come, come to be under this? Well, Stephen, I, I think we're going to have to see how that shakes out just a bit. Everyone's still digesting the opinion. But I think in the end, again, uh, religious organizations, religious leaders are not going to be forced to perform ceremonies which violate their religious tenets. But on the other hand, with regard to recognizing uh, the validity, leg the legitimacy of same-sex marriages, I think the Supreme Court has spoken now, and, and that will be the final word on that. You know, Tom, I wonder, getting back again to something that Dana said, she said, you know, um, marriage isn't just a, a religious commitment. For many people, it's a civil contract as well, and there are government benefits tied to that. Is that really part of the crux of all of this? I think it's part of it, uh, but it's interesting as you look at the uh, decisions from both sides. Certainly, as Stephen read to us earlier, the majority through Justice Kennedy recognized that there are important aspects of same-sex marriage that go well beyond just the legal significance. Uh, benefits are certain, certainly part of them, but I think it's more than that. And again, the uh, dissenters said, well, uh, that may well be the case, but we have to look to the law, we have to look to the Constitution, and in our judgment, there's no basis for uh, this decision. All right, Tom Cranmer, as always, we appreciate your, your insight there on the legalities of this very complicated. Matter of fact, this was, this was it. the decision <laughs> right here, page and page, and this is a small typewriter. You're right. Lots of strong opinions on both sides, certainly, but a 5-4 to four decision legalizing gay marriage in the country. Tom Cranmer, thank you so much.